But first, let's go back to Washington and the CEO of TikTok testifying on Capitol Hill yesterday for more. Let's welcome in our team of experts this morning. Uh, we are joined right now by political analyst and best-selling author Mark Halpern, the former lieutenant governor of New York, Betsy McCoy, also with us. Mark, good morning. Good to see you. Happy Friday. We made it. Glad about that. We're also joined by radio host Christopher Arps from St. Louis this morning. Great to have you all on. Um, Mark, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll start with you. Just want to get your reactions to these hearings yesterday and the fact that for the first time in a long time, we had a totally bipartisan hearing yesterday, Republicans and Democrats on the same page in Washington. What'd you make of that? This guy had weeks, really months to prepare, and it didn't go very well. I'm not sure what he expected the questions to be. The questions really were not unpredictable at all. He did a horrible job. All those high-priced lobbyists who worked for him uh, probably owe him a refund. And he's now opened the door to potentially having a bipartisan consensus that the app should be banned. The courts are going to have to decide this eventually. Uh, but for all the million, tens of millions of users of the app in the United States, they're now probably wondering whether the company is well run enough because they could lose their access to the app they love. Yeah, 150 million users in the United States alone. Betsy, the CEO of TikTok claims that TikTok is not spying on Americans. Take a listen. I ask you again, Mr. Chu, has ByteDance spied on American citizens? I don't think that spying is the right way to describe it. The Chinese government has that data. What, how, how can you promise that uh, that, that will move into, uh, into the United States of America and be protected here? Uh, Congressman, I have seen no evidence that the Chinese government has access to that data. They have never asked us. We have not provided. Well, you know what? I've I, asked find that that, I find that actually preposterous. Okay, Betsy, what would you make of that and that an answer right there? So that was clearly lawyered well, up. I've seen no evidence. Instead of just saying no or yes, I guess, I've seen no evidence. That, that sort of clears him of any possible perjury charge, you know, for lying to Congress. That's right. But he was totally unconvinced, unconvincing. And the fact is, Americans should be worried that TikTok and its parent, ByteDance, are ultimately controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. And the Chinese Communist Party can access this enormous load of personal data on Americans anytime the Chinese part, the Chinese Communist Party chooses to do so. So uh, Mr. Chu was unconvincing in two ways. One, he did not remove the very legitimate and growing concerns that doing business with a Chinese company and allowing it so much access to American data is dangerous. He also did not address the insidious and lethal impact of TikTok on our young people. There was in the audience yesterday in Washington a couple from Long Island whose 16-year-old son, Chase, committed suicide after being bombarded with over a thousand unsolicited right. images of suicide on TikTok. Yeah, it, Chris, and, and to back Betsy up, 40% of Americans, look, I don't have a TikTok account. I, I've looked into how to, you know, you go about setting it up. And they ask you a lot more questions than I remember answering, say, when I created my, my Twitter account. We know that they use biometric identifiers. Uh, they have you fill out a detailed profile, which, because TikTok is owned by this, this Chinese company, which reports directly to the CCP, Betsy mentioned it, ByteDance, the speculation and suspicion is that TikTok is funneling the information of American citizens directly to the CCP. We had Xi Jinping uh, meeting with President Putin in Moscow earlier this week, talking about a new world order and now this poll 40 percent of americans say they don't want tiktok here in the united states what do you think happens next chris well i think that the uh, american people are going to make their voices loud and clear i think that tiktok is a, con a, con a serious uh, security concern i think they're going to try to do some surface things to show that uh, they are more in control of it than the chinese but i just don't think americans are going to buy it um, if you look at ch uh, the TikTok in China, it's much different than it is here in the United States. It's much more controlled. And I just think that uh, the president of TikTok did not do himself uh, a great deal of uh, favor yesterday. He sounded slick and he sounded uh, evasive. I thought this was interesting, Mark. Point out, Rob, Go ahead, Betsy. The Chinese are killing our children with fentanyl 
and they're killing our children with the insidious messages delivered via TikTok. And we have to stop both of them. Unfortunately, on the issue of TikTok, we're facing a First Amendment limit. And Trump tried twice to get rid of TikTok, and federal judges overturned him. But there must be a legislative way to do this. You couldn't make this up. Our greatest adversary builds an app. Americans voluntarily put it on their phones, tens of millions of Americans. And it's used to destroy our young people and to spy on us. It's an incredible story. And it's, it's so incredible, it actually got Democrats and Republicans to agree something needs to be done. You know, Mark, I heard Seth Denson mention this on Wake Up America yesterday, and I just hadn't put this together, but it makes perfect sense. Betsy, to your point, a couple weeks ago, the big story was this Chinese spy balloon, which went west to east over the continental, the lower 48, you know, from Montana, well, Alaska, then down through Montana and out, and eventually it was taken down uh, off the coast of South Carolina. Uh, they were spying on U.S. military installations. They passed over, by some estimates, more than 20. You think that with TikTok, they're not actually trying to data mine U.S. information, Mark? They are. I mean, can you imagine, can you imagine the meeting where some young communist says to his, his boss, hey, I got an idea. We're going to get Americans to voluntarily put a, p a piece of software in every one of their homes and carry it with them all day that will allow us to spy on them. Nah, that'll never work. It yeah. Worked. Yeah, good point. And then, Chris, I'm wondering, so a congressman from New York, Jamal Bowm, uh, Bowman is yes. his name, uh, he says that attacking TikTok is, is xenophobic. Take a listen. Republicans have been beating the anti-China uh, drum since even before they took control of the House of Representatives. And this is more governing through fear-mongering without actual evidence. I'm a sitting member of Congress. We have never received one briefing explaining the dangers of TikTok and how TikTok are a national security risk. So this is a rush to judgment without, ha without having a larger conversation around the harms of social media in general. So, Chris, and he's a Democrat alone on an island yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and by the yeah. way, while we're at it, yes, I, I do think we should look at Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Google and all the others, uh, all the other American-based social media platforms. Uh, but do you think somebody from TikTok might have gotten to Congressman Bowman uh, and promised donation dollars or, or yeah. something? Because he's been, he's been the only voice in either party making comments like that. Yeah, you've basically made the point that I was going to make. There is bipartisan condemnation of China from Democrats and Republicans, but you have Jabal Bowman, who did a press conference uh, the other day in front of the House, uh, admonishing Americans because uh, we're concerned about TikTok uh, spying on us. You know, we see the same thing, and it's disappointing to me as an African American to see African Americans bending over for the Chinese. We see this in the NBA with LeBron, how they have capitulated to the Chinese. And it's just sad to see that see that in his case. I'd be very interested in the next coming weeks and months to look at his campaign finance reports and see if he has gotten a campaign donation from TikTok or some type of Chinese entity. Yeah, great points, Chris. We'll leave it there. I also thought it was interesting. He's got two young kids. He said both his kids are not allowed on TikTok. I'm paraphrasing, but he's got two kids who do not have TikTok accounts. Interesting. Um, we'll pick this back up on the other side. Betsy, Mark, Chris, thank you.